I weep for mankind. Why are your books greater than my book? Oh, hold on, I was gonna say I'm I'm, I'm fine with the segue, Shani. <laughs> um, please uh, explain the Amalekites. They were murdering people. They were going to murder the Jews, and God had to go and protect said Jews because he had to bring in the bloodline for Jesus Christ to come. So all of you guys who sit in here denying said things can believe in him and be saved. I weep for it. Thing if I were her. Well, her well, 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 let's recount what has happened to me in the last week. I've been in jail. You, you don't need to tell them. Every, I've been in the ward because I tried to kill myself. Yeah, he, he put her, he tried to put her in jail for what was it? Oh, because for, because her, the brother in law got up in her face like this close to my pushed, face. She pushed him. I didn't push him. I took him by his shirt like this and I scooted him out of the. Sh Scoot him out the door, and all those injuries was caused by my door that he punched in. But the cops won't believe it, because they're idiots here. And I, I refuse to contribute to it. It's because my heart has been so ripped out. I may deserve the hate, you know? I bring it on just to piss people off and just to tick them off, you know what I mean? It's okay. And and here's the thing. It's okay for them to rip you up and say whatever the fuck they want. But when you turn around and do it to them, oh, they cry, they whine, they act like, big fucking baby, ba 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 ba. I don't understand why people say they love Jesus and they can't love their own brother and sister. It, it's just like, we're so close to Jesus coming. Just, you're misbehaving and... You're being so wicked, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm standing back, and I'm watching. Come on, Chantel. How much money have I given you in your fucking super chats? And I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch, and I give you money in super chats. Really? This is just shows you what happens when you're charitable to people. The Bible is really right that these people will just wax worse. And worse, and I, I, I'm focused on my own self. I'm focused on my own salvation. As soon as you give to people, they just backlash and backstab you. I, I'm just, I'm staying as separated as I possibly can from people, and I just, I, I see them and, and how they're behaving and how hateful they are. And, self-control here for a moment. This is the fruit of the spirit. Show me the spirit of self-control. You really are the one really talking about the spirit of self-control, you. Seriously, you. You. Spirit of self-control, you. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I thought. Be silent. Okay, so this is our main channel, Shani for Christ here. Shani made several videos today lying about me, saying, saying, I lie about you. Hold on a minute. 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 This video you made was this, okay? You you made a video saying three years of ministry ruined. Then you made a Christian video. Then you made another video getting mad at me about me saying that Jesus H. was long, which had nothing to do with Rev, but you brought that up. All right. You can do this. You can't be hypocritical and you now. You made all these ridiculous videos today. You know what hypocrite is? Two of your best friends have fucking lived in America. That's what you're doing right now. Okay. Who have long hair? Who are your best friends? Okay. Okay. So, so going back to my, going back to my, Shani, we both can't walk at the same time. Like I don't, I don't want that. No, I'm just I, I just feel so betrayed by so many people that is just like I, I just I, I weep. Whatever. So well, that's the news. Shanny's indefinitely suspended on Twitch.
Shani for Christ or Shannon Eileen McGraw Gaddis Dornbush is a content creator who began on the YouTube platform as some might describe as a fake fundamentalist Christian. In this video, I will be referring to her as Shani or Shani for Christ as that was her online moniker. Shani was born on August 27th, 1983, making her just shy of her 40th birthday upon recording this video. Shani was discovered in 2014 by the Drunken Peasants podcast. You see, Shani was known for debating her odd belief systems, and she decided the moon was not real, something we often hear flat earthers, such as our buddy Cece, bring up on this channel quite often. But right. you also have to realize Orion and Pleiades are in the sky, yes, but there's also fallen angels. And since the Bible refers to stars as fallen angels, I do believe the stars are fallen angels in the second heaven, and I believe Orion and Pleiades are actual beings. And um, because it yeah. says even in the Bible that Lucifer can turn into a being of light. So. Uh, wait, do you believe yeah, the moon? Now, Mike, Mike, you wanted to uh, to say something if earlier. If you I, I just want to know, do you believe the moon exists, or is that not real? I believe the moon is a light a light source. Like wow. the sun. A big piece of rock? Wow, uh, so it's Shannon. not a piece of rock. I don't Shannon. believe it is. Uh, you don't okay, believe Shannon. a piece of rock. So, in your mind, the sun is God. Didn't say right. that. No, she didn't, she's not saying that. Okay. Shannon, so, uh, my next question would be, who spiked your Kool-Aid, you Shannon? You use, but okay. All right, let's... Shannon, um, do you uh, believe what you see when you look through binoculars? I believe in what I see. Okay, I can see there's two lights in the sky. One at night, that's the moon, and then one at, during the day, and right. that's the sky. Yeah. I see two different distinct lights. Okay? But, but can you, I actually uh, observe that believe? the moon is actually a rock? No, because I can't get into that place. So, oh, Shannon, Shannon, do you believe yeah, the Yeah, but do you trust your eyes when you look through binoculars? Yes, I have before. Okay. Um, have you ever looked up in like the night sky at uh, planets, planets like Jupiter or? You no, I've never done that stuff ever in my life. Well, I got some advice for you, Shannon. Head out to Walmart, yeah. buy a cheap plastic 1999 telescope, <laughs> and look at the moon. Look at Mars. Actually, Mars is in a good rotation no. right now, I, to where you know. can actually I don't see know. it. How about no? How about yes? Because How if you no? put this stuff about by faith, existence, not by sight. It's not your sight. Well, let me put it to the uh, this way. There are times in the night sky you can see a full moon, and there are craters on it. It looks it like looks, something that's been bombarded like by a meteorite. But I'm not going to go and say that it is a crater. Oh, no, no. Okay, so, so Shannon, now. God. So, so Shanna, I'm curious. Um, if you said the moon is just the light source, uh, what what exactly do you mean by that? I mean, especially when you can actually see the detail on it, you can see the craters on it. Are you saying that it's not anything physical? That it's just it's just a light? So or are you I saying can look to an LED type sun lamp and it has little crevices and stuff on it? But how do you explain the shadows on the moon? Yeah. I'm not going to. You're not going to because it doesn't fit into your God's the Moon story context. No, I'm not going to because I don't care. Can I ask you how, how, how does what the, the Bible, what the Bible in several places talks about the Moon? It uses the Moon, uh, it refers to the Moon in the same way that we refer to the Moon uh, today. That we use it to, you know, uh, discern times of, you know, days and months, you know, all that kind of thing. I yeah. Mean, can so, I ask Shannon a question real quick? And I'm not trying to joke or anything. Do you believe that the sun goes around the earth? I mean, the earth goes around the sun, sorry. Like I said, I believe there are lights. I'm not going to go any further than that because I don't know. Because I can't observe it myself. Well, I got some advice for you, Shannon. Head out to Walmart. Yeah. 
buy a cheap plastic 1999 telescope and look at the moon. Look at Mars. Actually, Mars is in a good rotation no. right now. No. The way you no. can actually How about see no. it. How about no? How about yes? Because if you no? put this stuff about by faith, not by sight. DPP Drunken Peasants podcast of course found this to be hilarious and it found her via a debate that Jacqueline Glenn actually got into with G-Man so they began to cover her quite often. Buy a telescope and look at the sky. Okay, well it gets bigger. So uh, I've looked in the sky before with it telescope. Gets bigger. Or how about you basically just stare a telescope at the moon, you will see craters. You will see rocks. Or how about you try bouncing a laser off the damn thing? That usually works too. Well, yeah, I, I could possibly do those things. But see, when you look at something and you're in a lower dimension than that thing, of okay, course. Okay, what's the dimension in your perspective? Uh, you what know, do you have a different type of a dimension. Look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just enough dimension. right angle to something else. It, it's a simple yeah, yeah. question, Shannon. What's the dimension? You yeah, know, yeah. came out a video with uh, yeah, yeah. because every YouTube video on YouTube is true. Yeah, yeah. It was Carl Sagan yeah. talking about it, so yeah, yeah. you really can't say much. <laughs> Uh, I'm, to actually I'm pretty sure. Show. I'm pretty familiar with Carl Sagan's work. And, uh -huh. well, he's well, the star stuff guy. Talking about yeah. Carl Sagan and see what Carl Sagan says and not treat me like a freaking idiot. I'm done with this room. You people are ridiculous, stupid atheists that do not Christians like shit. Can I ask you a question? What, Shannon. <laughs> oh. there. So so when the Sorry, sun God. when the sun goes Sorry. down, do you think it's still there or do you yeah. think it disappears? You're, you're not doing any good because you're just getting here to rage quit. Um if I can maybe uh try a kinder, gentler approach to things. Nadia, um, you go ahead, yeah, Nadia, if you wanna ask a question. Oh, Never mind, she rage quit. Uh, G-Man is just one of the characters in this insane Shanny story. Besides him, Shanny's current husband, and I put that in quotations, is Jason William E. Groff, known to the internet as the Reverend or Rev. Together they are known as Rev and Shanny, and they will livestream for hours on end from their disgusting bedroom or from their uncle's couch that she pees on. Yeah, we'll get into all that. Shani also received a tiny taste of fame when in Shane Dawson's final episode of his documentary, The Beautiful World of Jeffree Star, aired. This episode featured a clip of Rev and Shani opening their new JSC conspiracy eyeshadow palette. Of course, Shani was super excited and thought this would bring her the fame and fortune she had always begged for. Spoiler, it did not. On Kiwi Farms and the Brett Keen Wiki that basically just copied Kiwi Farms, Shani is described as a morbidly obese, 37 years old, although at the time of recording this she's 39, mother of two who weighs 600 pounds, fundamentalist Christian who somehow finds men on the internet to give her lots of money. Shani's every stereotype of fat white trash, including but not limited to various arrests and brushes with the law, poor life decisions, drug use, multiple husbands, resulting in ignored children who have seen horrors, evictions, name changes, and internet attention whoring, which attracted a small but ever growing cadre of haters, whom she blames for all of her problems. It goes on to state, Rev's claim to fame is his tiny baby carrot dick, which he tries futilely to cram into Shanny on their OnlyFans page. Jason also has his own channel where he posts videos on an array of subjects, including his tiny penis. However, that isn't quite true. You see, Jason, aka Rev, got noticed for also being a fundamentalist Christian who would preach on his YouTube channel. One of the many communities I have been blessed to get to know is the psycho-crazy incel Christian community, as we all know it as, and Jason was a part of that. He was even sort of buddies with Tragic and a part of the Man Cave Christian Discord General Pioneer, another creator well-known in Hater Nation, is also a part of. That is sort of how their story begins. 
Jason was born on August 19, 1984, and appeared to have a decent upbringing. He grew up with money and was left quite the inheritance upon his parents' passing. Remember that information, it will be important later. Rev seemed to have a good relationship with both his parents and spoke quite fondly of his childhood memories and upbringing. It seems that at the very least, he had a better relationship with his family than Shani ever did with hers. Shani was previously married to a man named Douglas Allen Gratis and had two children by him, William and Zachary. We are not going to be focusing on the children in this video whatsoever as they are the victims of both their mom and their stepfathers and we will get into all that. However, I have heard that Douglas was a complete absent father and might have been high often on meth, which eventually resulted in him going to jail and this is why he has not been in the boys' lives and is also not a fit enough father to ever be considered for custody of his sons. After Shani and Douglas were divorced on July 23, 2010, Shani met a man named Christopher John Dornbush, who goes by Chris. Chris was a decent dude, and most people who have discussed him in the past have claimed that he took good care of Shani and the boys. The relationship got rocky and there was some cheating. Now, I am unsure who cheated first here as I had a hard time weaving through all the information, but it sounds as if Chris caught Shani cheating with Rev and then went and cheated in retaliation. Due to this, the two broke up and Shani literally showed up on Rev's doorstep, both kids in tow like, Hey, I'm here, you're a dad now to these boys, congrats! Shani and Chris finalized their divorce on July 17th of 2017, and it is said he stayed in contact with the boys until recently. For the next several years, there would be numerous dramas, some resulting in evictions from their home, lots of moving around, cancer scams, and eventually abuse, which ultimately got Shani booted from the platform. I have done my best to grab some of the key moments of Shani's online footprint for this video. If I forgot anything, that is due to me not wanting the video to be 100 hours long, but please do tell me down below in the comment section, as I do want this to be as informative as possible. I want to warn people out there not to trust Shani or Rev, or even G-Man really, and ensure people understand why Shani and Rev have been hated on so much. You see, these two are not law cows like Fuzz99 was a law cow, oh no. These two fundamentalist Christians who preach to the internet together while breaking every commandment in the Bible and going against God in every way possible deserved a lot of the hate they got. Most was warranted. Shani would stream for several hours a day, screaming at her haters, with Rev tucked in the background cheering her on. Some joke that the only time they heard from Rev was when he was pumping up his girlfriend with both love and food. In fact, both would beg for food and cigarettes and Delta 8. Delta 8 is a part of the marijuana plant that doesn't get you stoned, and I still don't really understand it, especially as a stoner myself. However, the trolls kept on showing up and trying to make Shani or Rev, or both, rage out in as many streams as possible. This was especially worrisome behavior for everyone involved when the children were in the home. We'll get to all that. In December of 2019, Shani even posted a picture of her going to the hospital as a fuck you to her haters. It did not end up deterring people from talking about her, and in fact, people then took to social medias to call her out for emotional manipulation. It seemed like the more Shani and Rev told their haters to go away, the more haters would appear. Both would react to every troll that showed up, and due to that, they collected quite the group of haters. But these haters aren't haters for no reason. There are a lot of reasons to hate Shani and Rev. Let me break them all down for you. You stupid motherfuckers! Bitches! Oh, by the way, the Geek Room are nothing but fucking niggers! And you could go lie and say, oh, that didn't happen. Yeah, right. Some people, some people are watching what you're saying. And some people aren't quite your friend as you think you are. Go play that and talk about it. 
You know what, Callie? I'm going to say this. You're as cold as the slave masters. You're just as evil. you just as evil. you just as evil. And I rebuke both of you in Jesus Christ's name. Shani also came onto Cow Wrangler's radar after defending Foodie Beauty by calling her detractors the N-word. Soon after, claims of racism struck Chantel and she disavowed Shani and what she was saying. This led to Shani having a meltdown on video and her continuing to call everyone on YouTube the N-word for a few days. The two patched things up for a while, or at least Shani never got the message. She was seen commenting under Foodie Beauty videos and all comments were liked by Foodie, also known as Chantel. It seemed Shani gained an obsession for Foodie Beauty. In fact, she often takes to the platform to scream at her haters and sometimes she still uses the N-word or does racisms. Shani has been labeled a racist for all of this, rightfully so, and she has been racist on a lot of occasions. She seems to enjoy calling her haters the n-word a lot. A lot of people feel that Shani harasses Foodie and tries to reach out to her too much. Honestly, this is the least of our worries when it comes to Shani, as it's not like she'd ever make it here to Ottawa or to Kuwait to like actually stalk Foodie in real life. There's a lot of worse things about Shani that we need to get into, like the racisms. So again, if you feel as though there's some really important stuff I'm missing about her Foodie Beauty obsession and that drama, leave it in the comment section down below. Shani ended up feeling betrayed though when Foodie cut ties with her completely, not wanting to be called a racist herself, resulting in Shani raging about how people are unappreciative when she donates. They deserve the hate, you know? I bring it on just to piss people off and just to tick them off, you know what I mean? It's okay, and, and here's the thing, it's okay for them to rip you up and say whatever the fuck they want, but when you turn around and do it to them, oh, they cry, they whine, they act like, big fucking baby, bah, 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 bah. And Come on, Chantel, how much money have I given you in your fucking super chats? And I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch, and I give you money in super chats, really? This is just shows you what happens when you're charitable to people. As soon as you give to people, they just backlash and backstab you. Whatever. I was Chantel's super fan and she fucking hates me. For no reason other than I said nigger. You people really need to get over your liberal thinking. To Foodie Beauty, thank you for not supporting me for saying that word. It, I don't regret it, but at the same time, I'm never using the word again, so there is that. Other than if it applied to a joke, which there's a lot of jokes that it can apply to. But a lot of people have this thing in their head now, if you say the word, it's automatically a racial thing, and it's... Whenever somebody comes on the internet and goes, I am in need, you know, uh, could I get a couple bucks? Carl, you have $600 or $6,000 for me? Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really awesome. Yeah, James, I need money. <laughs> Why? You need things. Money doesn't grow on trees, all that. You guys know that. You're hardworking people, I'm sure, right? But I'm a, I intend to get my jobby job. Don't you worry about that, okay? I'm telling you, you can believe it or not, but there's some junk in my head that makes this very hard. But I promise you, I've already put, I have put applications in and num nobody's called my number. No, Shani didn't get 40. You yourself said it was somebody that you can work cash, you can work, yeah. I know I could. I'm telling you that re it's a transportation issue now too. Okay, th there's there's so many different things that have been going on in my life that you don't know about and I'm not going to tell you about that you wouldn't understand anyway. I'll give $40. What's the live stream going to be about? Oh, cool, Taz. That would be awesome. Our, our PayPal and, and Cash App is in the description. 
the I I mean Shani will just do a live stream, you know. Shani and Rev do not work and refuse to get jobs, so instead they are often seen on the internet begging for money for small items such as their cigarettes and Delta 8. Often they will beg for food, which has resulted in trolls sending them things such as teddy bears, hot sauce pizza to mess with them. Like half a pizza and like all the, all the breadsticks and all the cinnamon sticks and an entire two liters. Oh. I believe that. Let me pause that. It's hot, hot, hot. Yay. Oh my god. Oh, oh my god, it's like everything. Oh my god, that's like a hot wing. Oh my god, they gave us the spiciest thing they could have, that, give us. It looks spicy, yeah. That does look spicy. Why would you give us an extra spicy pizza? Because they're trolling your dumb ass. You troll? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for the pizza. It's like... Yes. Now, I will say that does look good if it has some cheese on it, like they said. Uh, from what I heard, it has like white sauce, and I'm not a fan of a white sauce pizza, so. It's like a bunch of hot peppers and hot sauce. Yeah. It looks delicious, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at her face. She is not happy at all. It looks really good. Oh, we're gonna be hurting with that one. So gonna be hurting with this one. I even think they put cheese on it. What? I, I see cheese. It seems the two of them didn't mind, however, as they just show up the next day begging for the same stuff from the same people. People have donated money to them on several different occasions and then have spoken out about how ungrateful Shani can be and how rude Rev can be, constantly bugging them for more cash and then lashing out at them when they can't deliver any. Several of her members had left her community when she had a channel and memberships due to how she had treated them when they were unable to donate. Shani and Rev would often write people in DMs and ask them for cash, using the boys to gain sympathy from those who have a good heart. Shani has also had cancer for 10 years. No, not quite that long, but we are all anxiously awaiting for she and Jim to tell us what the cure for cancer is. She has claimed to have had cancer for a couple years now. It seems no matter what, both of them come on the internet to grift for what they need instead of working for it or even providing content. As stated, they don't really do anything like reactions or even commentary. They just stream themselves sitting in front of the camera, staring into space and asking us for donos. If they did attempt to provide us with some commentary content, the commentary was juvenile at best and barely transformative content. They would often just watch someone else covering a topic and then pause it to scream at each other. Whenever Shani turns around, she's dying. And no, not just because she's too large to turn around and makes her lightheaded. No, because she uses illnesses as a way to garner sympathy in donations. Shani has bipolar, borderline personality disorder, fibro, osteoporosis, arthritis, sociopathy. Oh wait, no, that last one was just what I think she has. Never mind. The people who donate to them are often attacked as well, and I just want to take a moment and say, please don't do that. Shani and Rev can both be very manipulative, and not everyone is aware of who they are and what they're about. Those who donate do so out of the goodness of their hearts, and I don't think coming for them will help the situation. So please be respectful when covering these two. Don't take the drama into real life and don't flip out on people who donate. There's a lot of infighting between the cow wranglers and a lot of gatekeeping of content. Due to this, content creators have pointed fingers at each other in an attempt to accuse each other of simping for or supporting Rev and Shani. Don't fall into that nonsense. This platform is big enough for everyone. The pasture doesn't have a no trespassing sign and normies never deserve hate mobs. Shani and Rev don't deserve money, but it appears as long as they have a way to beg for it, they will continue to do so and never get jobs. Shani's Kiwi Farms thread describes her well, stating, As someone with borderline personality disorder, Shani spends her entire life flipping between two equally destructive personalities. Personality 1 is raw hedonism, trying to cram every hole to wring dopamine out of her brain like a rag. Personality 2 is crying that people don't like her, with a total and complete inability to self-reflect. The fact that Shani and Rev fight often on camera does not help people's opinions of either of them. Shani is known to be abusive to Jason. On May 5th of 2019, she was arrested for assault and knowingly reckless behavior. She pled guilty, received a deferred sentence, was fined about $2,000, and bonded out on $2,500. She was on probation afterwards.
This is... We know that, but for domestic violence, you know, our hands are kind of tied, even if you didn't want to press charges. Okay. Help me then. Bye, Jason. This is called MK Ultra, by the way. Safer transport to jail. I can't get off. Okay, don't, don't, don't. I know. Okay, don't worry about it. You know what? Let's, let's go back over. The, you want to go back? You want to sit on the curb? <laughs> sit down. Can you just take these off me? I promise. I cannot take them off. Or loosen them, please, please. We already have them doubled up. It hurts so bad. Please get well, this off me. Get the ambulance to get here. Then we I can don't deserve this. Possibly take them off. Uh, just take me to the mental ward instead. I'd rather go. It hurts so bad. Officer, please. It's so tight. It hurts so bad. Please. What hurts right now? My back and my shoulders. I have fibromyalgia. This is hurting like hell. Okay. Please help me. I can't get a strap like this back here like this. I need the front work. The most disturbing argument they got into for the entire world to see was only a year ago when Rev was caught sending his tiny dinger pic to what we all believe to have been one of those AI sex bots. Shani raged out and made Rev shave his head all weird and then wrote the letter A for adulterer or a-hole I guess whichever and forced him to sit on a live stream where he was just meant to take abuse from the commentators. When they began to take Rev's side and told him he should leave Shani due to the abuse, she raged out again and had him end the stream. Fucking hua! I'm a whore now? I'm a whore now. You fucking hua? I'm a whore and disgusted now. Yeah. You're a fucking hua and a fucking cunt! 
It is my belief that both of them are abusive to each other and have been abusive towards the boys. We will get more into that specifically later though. There have been a lot of domestic calls to police over this relationship and both have been arrested on numerous occasions. It would be better off if they went their separate ways but they refused to. So they stay trapped in this hell and broadcast it for the entire world to see. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I just, uh, I want to make a video because this stuff on Twitter, uh, of these people that don't know us at all, just decide to keep spreading rumors, uh, that they've heard on stupid drama channels that my wife quote unquote abuses me. This stuff, they don't stop with it. And I want to make it as abundantly clear as possible that every accusation that's been made against my wife is not true. None of them are true. I don't know why I get looking okay. I drank too that night and I acted insane. I was not right. There's no reason why that woman went away to jail. I'm telling you, there was no reason. It was crazy. But I love you guys and uh, I'm just asking, like I said, for mercy. For you to stop this. Because it's not funny. As, much, as many laughs as you might get from this stuff, guys, it's not funny. I am honestly asking you to please stop this now. Because my wife is in a bad spot. So for the Christians out there that actually care. Well, if there's any that actually care, could you pray? We would really appreciate it. Because we do feel prayers when you guys do it. We love you. The real guys out there that get us and know that we're not Satanists or any of that crap, that we really are Christian and we're just different looking, right? For you guys, we love you and just pray for us, all right? We, we love you. So JWE Revelation News, you know, that's all I got to say. My wife is not what ma these people make her out to be. She has never abused me in any way. She's been a good wife. And now I just need prayers to be as good a husband as I can be because I'm messing up. Okay? So pray for me that I get guidance on how to be a freaking right husband. Because a lot of times I can be shit at it. JWE Revelation News. Peace. All right, so here's the thing. I know how the government works now because I've figured it out and I need numbers. So I need you guys' help. I want you all to go and call up the FBI and report Kiwi Farms for cyber stalking and cyber bullying. Everyone. Shani's parents have passed away. However, before her mother checked out, she was sure to let the whole world know just how awful her daughter is. I have to be honest, as a mother myself, I would never do this to my child. I don't care how awful people on the internet claim she was. Watching this, I get secondhand embarrassment. It's really cringe to see a mother throw her own child under the bus, even if that child is Shani. However, she did collaborate that Shani struggled from mental health issues her entire life and never seemed to care about other people. Lack of empathy can be a trait of borderline personality disorder, which many web doctor Googles on here have diagnosed her with. I do not believe she has ever been to a doctor to be diagnosed. However, this is what her mother had to say about all this. Thanks, Shani, for Christ. I watched Chris's videos, and I just think that it's about time that I get my side of the story out for a change. Because I noticed that um, Jason has been making comments about things he doesn't even understand or know about. But first of all, um, I just want to say to Chris that... 
yeah, you screwed up some things, but you were a good father. And I just want you to know that. Um, before you came along, Zachary didn't smile much. I mean, he didn't respond to people. And uh, he really, those boys really loved you, Zachary especially. But he, it was like the light turned on when you came into his life. And I just want you to know that. Nobody should ever question what a good father you were. You were a good provider, too. You did the best you could. I mean, I know you don't make that much money, but you did the best you could. And she sat there year after year, getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and, bigger and um, wouldn't work. I understand that. But I just needed to thank you for being a part in the boys' lives. Shannon has told you many things. I tried to warn you, her father and I tried to warn you about her before, but of course you wouldn't listen. She was your wife, I understand that. Jason's not gonna listen either. He's gonna have to find out the hard way. But nobody's abused Shannon, okay? That is her MO. She uses that with everybody. She did it with Douglas. She's done it with you. She's done it with her sister, her brothers. Everybody in her life has always treated her this way. And this is why she's so crazy. I mean, it covers for her mental illness. And she knows she's mentally ill. And she knows what she's supposed to do to help that mental illness. But she chooses not to. She chooses not to. She chooses to use it as an excuse to do what she does. And I don't have to explain what she does. I mean, she makes these outrageous videos all the time. She's always crying and carrying on and, and always, always, you know, always something negative. Her, since she was 16 years old, I don't want to say her entire life because she was a beautiful child. You know, I mean, she really was a very beautiful child and happy girl. She used to sing and she dreamed of going to Paris. And I noticed the picture in the back of the Eiffel Tower. And that reminds me of Shannon, the little Shannon, when my daughter. But something happened along the way. I know what happened. I think you know what happened, Chris. To her and it wasn't it was it, it it you know it was unfortunate that all that she went through what she went through um when she was 16 years old but it, it somehow changed her and ever since then she has blamed everybody else for all the screw-ups that she makes in her life she uses it as an excuse that except when it comes to what happened when she was 16 years old. And I'm not going to talk about it here because it was it was traumatic what happened to her. Um, and I have to say, as bad as this sounds, something inside of me tells me that maybe it didn't happen the way she said it happened. But something had to have happened for her to have turned out as she has. She has crashed and burned just about every single relationship in her life. And I'm not going to keep this video up for very long. I just want to be able to make my side of the story and make things clear. Um, she's got people like Miss Star and, and a couple of people that, you know, feel really sorry for her. But they don't realize how much she has affected everybody in her life. I mean, every one of her siblings and both of her parents have helped her out over and over and over again. And she walks all over them. She crashes and burns her bridges behind her. This is the last time I am ever, that my husband and I are ever going to be able to help her again. I mean, she nearly destroyed us during this last day when, when you and her broke up. Um. She's got Jason believing that there was abuse. That, um, there was no abuse going on whatsoever. 
we we bought her clothes we bought her makeup we bought her uh, she got to use her father's car every single day even when she wasn't working she got to use her father's car his truck we had we got an SUV that her father used at that time so I mean she had a way to work but she wanted to lay in bed for months she got fired from her first job for making videos on YouTube, okay? And she knows she's, she had, I gotta blow my nose, I'm sorry. I feel like crying right now. But she knows that she had to take care of her children. She doesn't do that. She expects everybody else to take care of them. That's, that's her thing. So she got fired from her first job. She laid up in the bed for months doing nothing but drinking alcohol and and um, crying all the time, making everybody miserable. Mostly what she was crying about was because Jason wasn't fully her boyfriend at the time. This is why I couldn't believe, you know, when they she finally did get him. You know, I couldn't believe it when she finally did. But, um... She said that she wanted him because he was a millionaire. This is the truth. She wanted him because he was a millionaire and she knew she wouldn't have to work anymore. And that she could just lay around eating, 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 eating. But she will never be able to give up wanting negative um, attention. She thrives on negative attention. She has done this since she was 16 years old. There always has to be some kind of turmoil in her life. And if she doesn't have turmoil, she will create turmoil. Just to get people to feel sorry for her for some reason. And then those people that feel sorry for her, then she craps on them afterwards. And I think a lot of people, a lot of you YouTubers and from the Christian community have experienced that with her. You figured that out the hard way. During all the arguments online, raging out at haters and dealing with constant drama, Shani told Rev it would be an amazing idea if he quit drinking. Not just quit drinking, but quit it cold turkey. According to The Ranch, Pennsylvania, a Promises Behavioral Health Company, quitting alcohol cold turkey is never recommended because your body will go through withdrawal symptoms, and these symptoms can include life-threatening ones such as seizures, gastric bleeding, delirium tremens, known as DTs, hallucinations, fever, high blood pressure, anxiety, and paranoia. Many treatment centers will advise you to wait until you arrive to quit drinking. The safest way to quit alcohol is gradually with the help of medication and medical monitoring that will prevent life-threatening symptoms. There are detox centers you can go to as well that could help you with that if you're struggling. However, Shani claimed she was a nurse and could take care of Rev. So she had Rev quit and within days, he was experiencing what's known as wet brain. According to American Addiction Centers, Wernick-Korsakoff Syndrome, WKS, sometimes referred to as wet brain, is a brain disorder related to the acute and chronic phases of a vitamin B1 deficiency. Vitamin B1 depletion is seen in individuals with poor nutrition and is a common complication of long-term heavy drinking. It's possible to reverse the symptoms when caught early, but left untreated, WKS can lead to irreversible confusion, difficulty with muscle coordination, and hallucinations. It was very noticeable that Rev was experiencing these symptoms. Shani would continuously stream Rev in a vulnerable state and even dressed him up in several costumes to add to the humiliation. During this time, a lot of people actually wondered if the couple had a humiliation fetish. Or if Shani did, that is. There are numerous videos on the platform of reactors showcasing what could only be described as medical neglect and abuse of Revelation News by his own wife. The two called themselves husband and wife, despite not being officially married. Yet they seemed to hate each other more than they loved each other. So pretty. You're like a butterflies. Yeah. You're pretty butterflies. Thank you. You're pretty. 
I love you. Fucking who? I'm a whore now. And I'm feeling it all over again, like it just happened to me. All of it, all the trauma, all at once. Yeah, it's like you're drowning in trauma. It, yeah, exactly. It's like I'm drowning in trauma. Yeah. And um, it smells down there that, where they don't even know them that, or how they look and, and call how disgusting they are. And, and do you see him? Yeah. What a slug. You months. don't let people in for months, and months the people, yeah, months of seclusion <laughs> and isolation. You finally let an individual in, and they just, as soon as you let them in, they just. Wah! They would argue, fight on camera, even break up and separate for short periods of time, and then return to each other just to do it all over again. Everyone sat and watched in awe, especially as Shanty blew through his seven hundred thousand dollar inheritance. Oh darn, I'm getting ahead of myself again. We have barely scratched the surface when it comes to Rev and Shani. The two of them are almost horror cows. We have not discussed them becoming homeless, Shani's latest cancer scam, and how they lost custody of the boys for abuse. I am going to end this part here, and next week I will be releasing part two of this deep dive where we will dive into the real issues with this Christian couple and why they are known as the worst Christians on the web. Please do all those YouTube things and subscribe so you don't miss out on part two next week. Be sure to take good care of yourself and practice self-care, and I'll see you all very soon. Much love. I'm going to leave you all with my favorite Revelation News video. Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, lasers, airplanes, it's a duck blur. Might solve a mystery or rewrite history. Duck tales, woo! -hoo. Every day that them and making duck tales, woo! -hoo. Tales of dairy, do bad and good duck tales, woo! -hoo. The, the, the danger lurks behind you There's a stranger out to find you What'd you do? Just grab our two soft up tails Woo! -hoo. Every day that they've been making duck tails Woo! -hoo. Tails of dairy do good at back up tails Woo! -hoo. No ponytails or cottontails No duck tails Woo! -hoo.